if you've purchased my plans for the electric ukulele or mandolin, if you download the notes on the fourth page, um, I've written out the hardware sheet. Now these are the pieces that you can't easily buy. Now for the actual metal plate itself, uh, in my notes I recommend brass. Brass is probably the easiest if you're working at home. You can buy a sheet of brass um, about 0 0.080 inches or 2.2 millimeters thick and you can bend that in a vise quite simply and then file it to this size um, as I show in my diagrams. Um, but I've also found if you go to a hardware shop sometimes they sell metal pieces and extrusions. Uh, this example I found in, in the B&Q shop. So whichever way you do this you're going to need to either bend a piece of metal. Um, if you find that the brass, if you're bending brass and it's too hard to bend um, what you can do is, is soften it first over a gas flame. Uh, this sort of takes away the temper of the brass and makes it more pliable. That way you can bend it in a vise and in the process of bending and hammering again it will harden up again. So that's that's what you can do with the brass if you're using brass sheet. Um, I'm going to use the aluminium today. We just need to measure this and saw this off. Um, then we're going to mark on all the holes first get those drilled out and then finally we will sand the shape. Okay, in my design um, I'm using 53 millimeters. If it's slightly over that's fine, but don't go too much under because we need to allow a bit of space either side of the string saddles. Okay, then we just saw it off. Make sure you wear a dust mask and eye protection for this. When using this sander, uh, using a little tray of water helps to cool the metal down. Okay, I've finished sanding this um, and I've double checked that the edges are square. I'm using the square on both sides, uh, using the, this face as the datum. Now this piece of metal is actually, because it's just an extruded section, is uh, it's 40 millimeters wide. Now my original design is 36. You can choose to make it slightly wider. There's no reason why you can't have an extra piece of metal in front. Um, I'm trying to keep close to the original design that I did, so I'm actually going to take off this piece of metal. Um, but feel free to leave it if, you, if you're making your own design. There's no reason why you can't make it slightly wider. Um, I'm just trying to keep it, keep it compact on this particular example. Um, I'm going to scratch it this time and then I'll use the sander to take off the same piece. Okay, now I have um, this is now 36 millimeters in depth, 53 centimeters wide. Um, what I'm going to do now is mark on the initial screw holes. Now, these, these are going to be, I've set my gauge to five millimeters and I'm just going to mark on the two edges and these edges here and so the, the ones on the front are five millimeters exactly five millimeters now if you scratch it just lightly roughly where you think it is this will give a little cross um, and we'll use that to draw the holes later Okay, so we've got a little cross there and a cross there. Now to do the other one here, we can do we can do the five millimeters thing before, but it's just a little bit further in front. So if we mark it, okay, so we've marked it there, um, but we do need to measure. So if we check on the drawings. What we do, we need to add the thickness of the plate to the depth. Um, so it's, it's, the line is still five millimeters from, from that point there. Um, the best way to do that is to put our vernier in, set to five millimeters, put that in. Okay, so again, we're just using the vernier caliper. Again, because the aluminium is so soft, I'm just using a wood knife. And again, I'll turn this around, do exactly the same thing. Okay. So we've got the initial marks and these wax is our datum. Um, what I'm now going to do, I'm going to pencil mark on the center line onto this piece. Um, it's important to know where the center line is so that we space out the holes on the back equally. 
uh, then we have to do the same thing for the front. Now there is a line uh, of 60 millimeters from the back edge, that way you can avoid um, the scratch. It just depends how you want to drill it out. Set your burner count to 16. Then you need to set your marking gauge if you're going to do it like this. Um, alternative is just to mark on with pencil and to scribe it on. So we release that and I'm using the back edge here to set it. Okay, on the back edge of this against the back line, we just scribe a line across. So we've marked on the center line. Um, once we've got the center line, we can then use that as our datum. The string spacing I'm using uh, on this example is 11 millimeters. So five and a half millimeters either side of this line, we're going to make first two marks. And then 11 millimeters later, we're going to make another mark. Once we've done that on this, on this, on this scratch line here, we're then going to transfer the same markings using our, our square onto the end so that we those lines match up. Okay, so now you should have, with your vernier set to 11 millimeters, you should be able to check um, that the marks line up. You rest the square against the back edge, which is your datum still. You know, if you rest the knife in the, in the, in the groove that you've just scratched, and then just take it to the edge. Now this doesn't matter because this won't be seen. So you, you've now got a scratch on the edge. And that scratch is what you're going to use to mark the next, next hole. And you can keep working your way across, doing the others too. Have the string through holes marked, and the scratch lines taken all the way to the edge. Now we need to turn it over, and we're going to mark those in the centre of each piece here. So we find the scratch line on the edge, rest it against the square. I'm just going to take that line. It doesn't have to go all the way across, but it's up to you. And so the last thing we do is to simply scratch across here, just past the center line. Okay, that gives our marks now. Okay, so we've made all the scratch lines on it. We try to avoid too many scratch lines on this side if we can. Um, but what we do now need to do is we need to take a, a, a you can either use, it is very soft metal, so you can just use an ordinary braddle. Um, but I like to use a punch uh, with a hammer. Okay, so we're ready now to drill out the, the holes. We're using a three millimeter bit, pretty much all the holes. Uh, we could use thinner holes for the mid, for the string holes, but uh, three millimeters gives us a bit more room. So simply rest the drill bits on the, the depression that we made, um, securing the piece in place. Spin them slowly one at a time. down a little bit, um, sand this off, uh, and then we're ready for shaping the corners. Okay, so we've sanded off the rough parts on the inside and outside. Um, we still have to sand off this bit here. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to, chamf we're going to put the chamfer in here. We're using the drill bit to make the chamfer because we can't get into this corner here with the, with the standard countersunk part bit. 
Um, I think about eight millimeters should be fine, but you need to check with the screw size that you're using. sand off the edges and clean this up. Okay, so nearly there. What we need to now do is put a five millimeter radius chamfer on the edge here, on the edge here, and uh, to smooth on the edges on this one too, uh, do the same again. It's like a five millimeter radius. The simplest way is to do this with a hand file. Uh, you can do it very carefully on a sander, but try not to take too much away. Take it away less is better. You're basically just rounding off the edge, um, following the curve of and the chamfer that we've done. You can see. This is the Shycaster Hardtail Saddle. Um, you, these are per, you purchase these um, in six, so if you buy two lots, that gives you three ukuleles basically. Now that's probably the best, most cost effective way to do it. The spring goes on the inside, so you simply thread on the, push the thing on, it's quite loose fit because it has to sort of bend up and down as the angle of the string changes. You then put this on. And then you screw this on. So the string goes over here through the hole, through the body, and, and to the ferrule on the other side. And it's a very simple design, it doesn't put any pressure on the metal, and you get the solid the sustain through the body. And it's how the telecasters and the hardtail strap casters are done. I realize this is quite a long video, so thanks very much for watching this. Bear in mind, you can easily uh, adapt this to your own instruments. Um, if you're making a tenor guitar, for example, or a mandolin, um, or or five string or three string, you know you can just subtract or add another string saddle. It's very simple to do. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know or drop me an email at my website. Thanks very much, and see you again.